Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Stranger Things Season 4. Welcome back to Hawkins, Indiana. It's the late 80s and our adorable kids have grown up into high school freshmen. Tonight they're playing Dungeons and Dragons with their new D&D group, the Hellfire Club. Their dungeon master is new character, Eddie Munson, a super cool heavy metal nonconformist. But their party's down a man tonight because Lucas has joined the basketball team, so for his replacement they bring in his younger sister, the adorably precocious Erica. Tonight is the climactic final battle with the big bat of their campaign, the Archlich Vecna. D&D and basketball both come down to the Sinclair siblings, and yeah, nat 20 in the hoop, wow! But meanwhile, there's trouble in Hawkins. The cheerleader Chrissy is being haunted by a creepy clock. She tries to buy some pot from Eddie, hoping that might help. In fact, she goes back to his trailer to get the harder stuff, but then she goes into some kind of trance where she's living a horror movie and being haunted by, oh, super creepy dude. As he grabs her, she starts floating and kills her in a disturbingly brutal way. Living next door to Eddie, is our friend Max, and that night the lights went crazy like some upside-down shenanigans. So Max brings in Dustin, who knows Eddie's innocent, but the rest of the town, like Christy's basketball boyfriend, jumps to the conclusion that he killed her in a Dungeons & Dragons satanic ritual. To help find Eddie and clear his name, they bring in their other teenage friends, Steve Harrington and Robin, now working at the video store. Their best lead is Eddie's dealer, Reefer Rick, so they search all the Rick's video rental histories and find the one with Eddie hiding in his boathouse. They give him the recap of seasons one through three, like what was it, Demogorgon Mind Flayer? But this was something different, a dark spellcaster who attacked with a curse. And so we have our name for this season's villain, it's Vecna. And our party's strongest member is not here to help because Eleven moved to California with the Byers family. She's having some trouble fitting in. In fact, these kids are downright cruel. And remember Eleven lost her psychic powers last season, they still haven't come back. But now it's spring break and her boyfriend Mike flies out to visit her, as well as his best friend Will. Will's older brother Jonathan has become a California stoner with his new best friend Argyle, a hilarious caricature of a human being. Jonathan was supposed to go to Hawkins to visit his girlfriend, Mike's sister Nancy Wheeler, but they've been having some long distance issues. The main thing is they're supposed to go to college together, but Jonathan doesn't think he's gonna go. He's gotta stay with his family and hasn't told her yet. Speaking of his family, his mom Joyce Byers gets a mysterious package from Russia, a ransom note for Hopper. Yes, she thought he died last season when they blew up the machine, but oh, what's this? He ran through the portal and woke up in the other one over in Russia. So Joyce calls up Murray, their hilarious, ridiculous Russian-speaking friend who's good at this kind of thing. They talk to Enzo, a guard at the prison camp Hopper befriended who can get him out for the right price. So they head to Alaska to bring the ransom to the hilariously annoying Russian smuggler Yuri. Hopper puts in a ton of work for his epic escape, but Yuri betrayed them and now they're all back in prison. Now back in Hawkins, the gang's trying to figure out who Vecna's next victim will be. And bad news, it's one of our own, cause Max is seeing clocks. Investigative journalist Nancy Wheeler finds out this murder was just like the old Victor Creel murder. Yeah, he went crazy and murdered his family, but he always claimed a demon did it, so Nancy and Robin go undercover and meet the man himself, Victor Creel. They get his story of how he moved into this haunted house, and yeah, sure sounds like it was Vecna. Meanwhile, Max is reading a letter to her dead brother Billy. She feels guilty about his death, because remember he was a bad brother, she used to wish he would die, but now he kind of redeemed himself and she feels bad. And turns out that type of guilt and trauma is exactly what Vecna feeds on. Oh no, he's got her! They check in with the girls who have something that might help. Victor Creel himself survived when his favorite song came on the radio. So they pop a tape in the walk just in time as Vecna's got her, oh she's floating! But now Kate Bush starts singing, running up that hill, and the window to the outside world opens, and Max runs for it! It's an epic, beautiful, cinematic masterpiece scene! If I could make a deal with Gerd! And boom, yes, Max makes it out! She survives, and Kate Bush soars back to the number one spot on the charts. You're a Kate Bush fan? Uh, yeah. Now I am. Meanwhile, in California, Mike and Eleven having a great spring break with uh, Will as their third wheel. Later, Will and Mike have a real heart to heart where it's like, sorry, I've been ignoring you, man. It's just, you know, I got a girlfriend now. Will has a secret that's making him sad. It's heavily implied he is gay, which is a hard thing to be when the world's not accepting. But the bullies show up and are just so mean for no reason. Why are kids so awful? Eleven's had enough. She clocks this girl in the face and was totally justified. But the cops show up and arrest her. But wait, it's not the real cops. It's the good CIA, Dr. Owens. Unfortunately, bad government guy thinks Eleven is the killer, so Dr. Owens is here to save her, and turns out he's got a thing where he can maybe get her powers back. He takes her to the super secret off the books, Project Nina, and guess who else is working here? It is Dr. Brenner, yeah, Papa! 
Yes, he survived the Demogorgon attack and now apologizes for being kind of a bad dude. So they put her in the psychic pool where she can relive memories of her younger self back at the Hawkins lab that she blocked. And looks like it's gonna work, she starts to get her powers back. Now they fill in her friends and put them under house arrest for their own protection, but they make a plan to escape by ordering a pizza from their new friend Argyle. But wait, what's this? That's not the pizza boy. Oh, bad government found him. And random agent guy goes into beast mode to save these kids. Luckily, pizza's here for the getaway car just in time. They got the number to the Nina project, but it's not a phone, it's a computer. So they go on a road trip to an expert computer hacker, Dustin's girlfriend, Susie. She helps him out with some 80s hacking, and now they're off to save Eleven. But back in Hawkins, the gang's investigating the old Creel house to look for answers. Max had been distant from her friends and broke up with Lucas, but now these two get back together. And remember, Steve and Nancy used to date. He's a much better guy now, and she's feeling distant from Jonathan. Will they rekindle a little flame? But now their flashlights start going off, and they realize this is Vecna's home base in the Upside Down. And Vecna is attacking someone right now because the basketball kids finally found Eddie. They're swimming out to catch him. But one of the guys is Vecna's the next victim and oh, he kills him right there. Now Dustin has a theory that at the site of each murder, Vecna opens a gate to the upside down. So Steve Harrington dives in the lake to see what's down there and oh yeah, it's a gate. And oh, a vine grabs him and Steve is in the upside down. Now the upside down is not a happy place. In fact, it's filled with killer bats. But the other teenagers followed him here. They do some bat smashing. Unfortunately, now their exit is blocked. They're stuck here. They go to Nancy's house to grab her gun, but wait, it's not here. And pretty soon they realize this bizarro version of Hawkins is stuck at the beginning of season one. The younger kids have regrouped at the real Wheeler house and sound travels from that one. They can kind of hear him, but can't talk back. So they pull the season one trick that Will Byers figured out. They can make the lights flicker. They don't have Christmas lights on hand, but they do have a light bright. So our gangs are able to communicate. They meet up at Eddie's trailer that now has a portal on the ceiling. And so it's a true upside down cross-dimensional traveling. But Vecna realized they're here and gets Nancy. But meanwhile, Eleven's gonna unlock her main memory, the bad one of a massacre at Hawkins Lab. Long story short, there was a nice tech that worked there that was gonna help Eleven escape, but first he needed her help to get the tracking chip out of his neck. But oh, it wasn't a tracking chip, it was a power suppressor. He's psychic too, in fact, he's number one. And he's not just trying to escape, he also killed all the other kids. He's got a whole philosophy that doesn't make sense, he's just a psychopath. Meanwhile, Nancy's in a Vecna trance and he shows her the Creel story from the point of view of the son Henry. And turns out the house wasn't haunted. He had psychic powers and killed his family. And he ended up at the Hawkins lab, became number one. And so when Eleven had to fight him without knowing how, she banished him to the upside down. But he didn't die there. He embraced it and became Vecna. He can't kill Nancy here. He just shows her his plan, which as you might expect is to open a monster portal and turn the whole world into the upside down. He only needs four kills to do it and he's already already done three, so one more and the world is doomed. They gotta go back down there and kill him, but they have to wait till he's distracted, attacking his next victim, and they know one he wants, Max will be the bait. But there's good news, cause Eleven's powers are fully back. Oh yeah, we're in business. They fill her in about Hawkins and Vecna. She's like, I gotta go back there and help my friends. But Dr. Brenner's like, yo, you're not ready. And he stages a coup, gonna keep Eleven here as a prisoner again. And Eleven realizes, hey, Papa, you're the real monster. But just then, bad government gets there. It's a big shootout. Papa's running with Eleven and oh, Papa down. Eleven's gonna be next, but wait, what's that? Did someone order a pizza? Yes, Eleven friends are here to rescue her by the distraction she needed to blow up this helicopter and Eleven and Mike are reunited. They gotta go help their friends in Hawkins tonight, but it's just not physically possible to get there. So Eleven has an idea. If Vecna goes in Max's mind, she can piggyback in there too. So they set up base at Surfer Boy Pizza, which has everything they need for a sensory deprivation tank. The adults, meanwhile, are on their own wild adventure being kidnapped to Russia, but Joyce breaks the peanut butter and Murray's learned karate. Uh, they don't know how to fly the plane though, so it crashes. Luckily, Murray and Yuri look enough alike. He's able to fool them and they get into the prison where they they find Hopper, but what's this behind that door? They're getting ready for a fight with a Demogorgon. Oh, an OG season one monster. This thing's a beast. Luckily, Hopper stole a lighter and is able to hold this thing off just long enough for them to open the gate and he gets out of there. And so Joyce and Hopper are reunited. While well, they're trying to find a ride back to America, it turns out Hopper's been on that Russian gulag diet. Dang Hop looking good and he and Joyce finally get it on. But they're interrupted by a call from the good CIA who fills them in on the whole thing and how their kids are in danger. They can't get back to Hawkins tonight, but there's a way they can help from here. Because while they were escaping, the Russians had here a piece of the Mind Flayer. So they're gonna break back into the prison and torch that thing because it's all connected, maybe give their kids an edge. So our Hawkins gang is all geared up to take the fight to Vecna in the Upside Down. Max thinks bad thoughts, which gets him after her, but then she thinks good thoughts where she's able to hide in those memories. The older teens go to Vecna's house, but it's guarded by an army of bats. Luckily, they've got a plan for that. They need a distraction to 
lure them out, and they've got one in the form of Eddie Munson putting on the most metal concert of all time in an alternate dark dimension, ripping Metallica. Yeah! So the bats fly away, and our game goes in, but there's another defense system here, the vines that, oh no, I mean, they get them. And Eddie's trailer's not as bat-proof as they thought. Eddie's gotta lead them out of there, and then it's time for an epic final stand. Wall. Things go bad in the real world, too, as Basketball Guy finds Max and Lucas and thinks Lucas is sacrificing her to the Dungeons of Dragon's Devil. So these two have a big fight, and Max can't hold Vecna off forever. Oh, he's in there. But, oh, what's this? Someone's here to help. Yes, Eleven, coming in from the pizza shop piggyback. She and Vecna have their psychic fight, and she's real strong, but he knows his powers better. And now we learn a missing piece of his backstory, because when she banished him here, the Upside Down was a slightly happier place. Till one day he discovered the Mind Flayer just chilling in its natural habitat. Now, we had assumed the Mind Flayer was the big boss and Vecna was possessed by it, its five-star general. But it's not the Mind Flayer who possessed Vecna. It was Vecna who possessed the Mind Flayer, bent it to its will, and he is the true big bad of the Upside Down. So now he's got Max and things are looking bleak. Eleven can't escape, but Mike comes in with the epic pep talk and boom, Eleven's out of there, trashes this guy. Simultaneously in Russia, things are looking bleak, but Murray with the flamethrower, oh, Demodog barbecue. Because Vecna's mind is in all of them. That really hurts. He starts to drop the troll. So our gang gets into his undefended body and bah, lights him on fire. Boom! Also, Hop found a sword and is sword fighting a Demogorgon. So it's an epic final climax where it cuts off the head and out the window. But his body disappears, so it's not over yet. And poor Eddie Munson dies from the bat wounds. No, he was so great. But wait, it gets worse because they were too late to save Max, she was too wounded and it's heartbreaking as she dies in Lucas's arms. And so after all that, Vecna got his fourth kill. All four portals opening up huge, converging right in the center of Hawkins. Nothing else happens though, no immediate apocalypse, so it's just a big earthquake, life goes on. And as our friends all return to Hawkins, it's happy reunions all around. Jonathan and Nancy reaffirm they're still dating, sorry Steve, although he doesn't tell her about the college thing yet, so it's all still open. But then there's a sad reunion because Max is alive, but in a coma. Eleven was there in her mind when she died and was like, no, I can use my powers to save you. And it kind of worked. She is alive, but may never wake up. But then there's the happiest reunion of them all. As Hopper comes home, Eleven finds out her adopted dad's alive. But in the Upside Down, Vecna is wounded, but not defeated. It starts to rain the iconic ash of the Upside Down. And indeed, if you check out these portals, they're spewing it into the atmosphere. The Upside Down is coming. So our heroes prepare for the final showdown. And that's where Stranger Things Season 4 comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.